Hi and welcome. Today I have a jelly printing video for you and I'm planning to print these pages of the sketchbook. I have already started um, and there are not so many pages left. I can't wait until these sketchbooks, I have two of them, are completely filled with prints um, because I don't want to use any of the prints before I haven't finished these books. Not sure why, but that's just um, that's just the case. And the sketchbooks are from Kunst und Papier and they are spiral bound. I don't have the weight of the paper in mind, but they are gorgeous for, for jelly printing. They tend to tear if you leave the pages too long on the plate. So I don't do this and um, yeah. I'm going to play with the new stencil textures we have in the store and I'm also playing with a certain color palette which is inspired by this art journal page I did uh, last week and I've mixed myself that turquoise because I didn't have it and I picked out the other colors. This is the greenish blue from Amsterdam, the quinacridon rose from Amsterdam, the Indian Rose, I believe, um, a Neo Pink, that's the Raw Sienna, and the yellow before was the Naples Yellow. Oh, I think it was the Venetian Rose, that one rose color. I will give you all the names of the colors in the description so you can check them out. I will not only use the new stencil textures, I will use some of my handmade texture plates that I've made with my die cutting machine and our stencils but I plan to try out the new ones and I've also made some um, some texture plates with the new with the new stencils. Um, it's quite great when you have a die cutting machine you can emboss stencil the stencils um, into paper and I'm using the back sides of our products. Um, these come with the stamp sets and the stencils and I just run them through the big shirt uh, with the stencil and the silicone rubber and the impression pad and then I have gorgeous texture plates to play with on the jelly plate and this means I don't have to clean the stencils afterwards and it also works a bit easier compared to the stencil I would say. Um, I will give you also a link in the description um, where you can find the exact sandwich you have to make to emboss with a stencil and I have to say you um, need a good quality stencil which is a little bit more thicker to make to emboss with it. If it's a very thin stencil it will not work because then the, the dimension you get is just not high enough. I'm using a new brayer today, that's the Speedball, and I don't know where I heard it, but I heard that this would work better than the red hard rubber brayers, because this one is a bit softer, um, and I just wanted to try that out. I have to say, I don't see any difference. Um, yeah. So I think the red ones work exactly in the same way. I just made a quick uh, texture into the color and then I'm printing it onto one of the pages of my sketchbooks. And the reason I have two sketchbooks is that I then can alternate between the, one, the two and each page has time to dry in between. What I also recommend, if you're printing in a book, don't close this book afterwards leave it open and loose I would say at least for 25 hours at uh, 24 hours um, I do this I lay my my sketchbook on my table and then I just let the pages that are fresh hang down the table so they don't touch each other and so they can't stick together I had some left over 
fragments on my jelly plate which were already quite thick and I thought I would get them all off the plate but that did not work. I think also that paper is a bit hard to um, to use to use it for so many layers because it tends to tear. So I'm sorry but I forgot to press record again. I cleaned the jelly plate uh, with a with a glue tape and then I started again because there were still some thick fragments on the plate which would have never come off with my next layers and I I wanted to clean the plate before I start working again. So here you see that I've already added some colors with a little bit of texture that I made with the stencil texture plates and here I'm adding some yellow in again and also these papers are quite nice and I always try to clean my brayer on the back side of jelly prints so I have double-sided papers and sometimes these uh, cleaning papers are uh, also very pretty to use for your paper crafting projects. As I have used quite thin layers, I'm brayering another layer of paint on top. Um, so I make sure that the paint isn't dry and that it will go onto my paper. I have taken photos after I have did the jelly printing of all the prints I did and you will find those um, over on our blog and I will also um, put them in the end of this video so you can have a quick flip through. I always lay a bigger sheet of paper on top because the paper is a bit smaller than my jelly plate and I don't want to mess up my fingers and I don't want to mess up the the print that is on top. I think the last print with that fra with this fr these fragments was really pretty. I'm leaving this video in real time. So have the chance to print along with me if you would like to. If it's a bit too slow for you, you can use that gear in the YouTube uh, settings. I don't know where you can find it. It's either on the top or on the bottom of the video screen and you can just um, speed up the video. For the next print I'm starting with the Queen Aquidone Rose. I just experiment and play. Um, I don't have any plans in mind. Just I just wanted to use the colors I picked and some of the new texture plates I have. This is I believe made with the Cross It stencil. And the more often you're using these handmade texture plates, the more paint you get on them and then they will release more paint if you stamp with it on the jelly plate. So if you're dipping the texture plate into the pink and then you put it onto an empty area, it will release more of the color um, when there is more color on the texture plate. So with the first times you're using them they will pick up more from the plate and won't release as much and this will change over time but what a nice thing here you can see how much of the paint it pick, picked up from the plate oh what's nice about this technique is you can always make yourself new and fresh texture plates here i'm just using one of the texture papers to uh, dry the paint I don't dry it 100%, I just dry it a little bit, just the first layer and usually that works perfectly. What I've recognized with these paints from Dale Rowney, they are not good for jelly printing. Um, they are, I believe, more sticky than the Amsterdam or the Schminke and they immediately grab the the layers of paint underneath 
and they make it stick to the brayer. Here I thought it might be because of that soft brayer and I will switch to the red one to try it out if the same thing will happen but it happens as well and I think it's just because of that paint. So in the future I won't use the De La Rowney paints for jelly printing I think because it worked but it does not work as good. Can you see it here? It doesn't work as good as the Amsterdam or the Schmincke paints. And I have to say that my De La Rowney paints are quite old. Um, but I have the newer ones um, with the fluid in the fluid version and there I have the same issue. I thought it was because of the fluid fluid paint that this was the reason, but maybe it's the brand. I'm now switching to my old brayer, which is usually a red one. It's now black because of that thick layers of paint that are already on there. And I will see if this makes a difference. My paints on the plate are now, I think, dry enough. And I'm going to cover them with a light color to print them. And here I did not recognize that this is the paint. And I'm using the white from De La Rowney, which is a new one, a new paint. And the same thing happens. Um, uh, when I recognized this, I started working quite quickly. So I don't ruin the textures that are underneath. Here you can see that it really pulls away the layers from the gel plate. And this does not happen if I'm using the Amsterdam paints or the Schminke paints. In the end, this is one of my favorite prints because of the many colors and also the high contrast I have. Here I'm using that burnt sienna again. No, not burnt sienna, raw sienna. It's one of my favorite colors. And I have to see if this one exists in the Amsterdam brand or maybe from Schminke. Because it's such a beautiful color, I also have it as watercolor, I think from Mijello. And I love it so much. I use it a lot for landscape sketching. And also um, this in the acrylic version here is so pretty. It's almost a gold color and very transparent. Super pretty. The turquoise, by the way, is a mixture of Dalo um, turquoise. Dalo turquoise. Dalo green. I think, no, Dalo turquoise. Delo turquoise and white and some primary yellow and yeah it as I said it was inspired by that art journal page I made and there is a neo color which is pretty similar in in color and this is um, what inspired me to mix this paint and I think it works so great together with that yellow and also when you add some pink, it, it's just a perfect trio, I feel. Here I'm trying to print right away without waiting and adding a finishing layer. 
Uh, when you do it like that, you have to try to work as quickly as possible because the paints um, dry, of course. And yeah, it's just something you can experiment with. And I'm, I'm mixing the two techniques of just printing right away or waiting for some layers to dry and then covering up with some other colors. And here you can see that there was quite a lot of paint uh, which was too dry to be transferred. But I don't mind that because these fragments on the jelly plate make the most pretty textures. So, um, yeah, with my next print, add, will, it, will, it will just add to the next print. And again here I'm waiting until the paint dries just a little bit so I can cover it with a layer of a lighter color to um, pull it from the plate. And on this print I have used two different textures. Um, I've used the Lattice and the new Marks 2 stencil combined. No, not the Lattice, it was the leaves too I believe. I will give you also all the stencils I have used to make the texture plates listed in the video description. Um, yeah, And the light color I'm using here isn't white. It's a Naples yellow from Amsterdam and this should be the Naples yellow reddish I think. Um, there are a few light pastel colors from Amsterdam. The Naples yellow reddish and greenish and then they have a titan buff dark a titan buff um, light and these are amazing colors 
um, as a substitute for white if you don't want to have a plain white color on your prints. Sometimes it looks better to have some kind of a creamy white. Um, I personally like that. I also prefer when I'm just drawing, um, I prefer a sketchbook that has not white paper. I want to have some slightly off white paper because I feel it looks just a bit more natural. Here I have a little bit too much left on the plate so I'm pressing the paper down again to get a bit more off. But as I said in the beginning, um, it looks always nice to have these fragments um, which are then on the next print. That's quite a simple pattern, but I think it's so pretty. I really like that one and the fragments of the pink are perfect. I'm starting the next print with the Venetian red. It's such a beautiful, not red, rose. It, 
just so beautiful because it's not that typical pink it's a little bit more off reminds me of the salmon color from from the neo colors it's just a little bit dirtied up against a usual pink but here i'm mixing it with the queen aquedone rose and i think both match very well together On this blue background, I decided to pick our Organic 2 um, stencil texture. It's amazing for um, an ocean print, I would say, and this is gorgeous for carb making, I believe. Yes, and this is going to be the last print for today. I will add a flip through all the prints I've done after this video. So you will see that soon. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope we will see us next time. Bye.